Hello there, welcome to an Index Laws video on the Zero Index. Zero Index, if any number, except for zero that is, is put to the power of zero, it equals one. Strange old rule this one, but I'll show you why it works later. First of all, we'll see how it works. X to the zero, any value to the power of zero, will equal one. It's one of the uh, most straightforward rules that we can apply here. So that's our basic idea, X to the zero equals one. Let's have a look at a few key examples here. We have to be a little careful because there are a couple of tricky ones in here. Let's have a think about them. 2 to the 0, well that's just a normal number to the power of 0 and uh, the rule says that equals 1. We have 5 to the 0, that's going to equal 1. Y to the 0 equals 1, a different pronumeral or a different letter to the power of 0, that's going to equal 1. Now here's our first tricky one here. Uh, this 3 that's in front of the y to the power of 0, uh, that 3 isn't being put directly to the power of 0. There aren't any brackets around there, so the only part of that term that is being put to the power of 0 is the y itself. So the y to the 0 section would equal 1, just like on the example above, but the 3 is just a normal 3 that's multiplying by that. So what we have there really is 3 lots of 1, and that'll equal 3. So you can see that the first three answers are 1 all the time, so don't get carried away there. Just watch carefully for when only part of a term is being put to the power of 0. That y has turned into 1, but the 3 uh, has remained as a normal 3. Now this one though, because the brackets are there and the whole of the bracket is being put to the power of 0, then we consider that whole of the bracket uh, to be ending up as being having a value of 1. So you can see the difference between this first example here, or the fourth example, and the fifth example. The first one isn't in brackets, so the 3 isn't being put to the power of 0, but in the second example here, the fifth example, the 3 and the y are both in the brackets being affected by that 0 index, and so we've got uh, that ending up being 1. A fraction to the power of 0, still being put to the power of 0, so the answer is 1. And this one is a bit trickier. We have a 4y and a squared to the power of 0. And I'm here to tell you that equals 1 as well. There's a couple of ways of thinking about this. We can think about the whole of the term in the bracket as being put to the power of 0. So, that, so therefore that's a 1. There's also another rule that says when you've got a power of a power, they multiply with each other. So that 2 times 0 would make a 0 there. And you could kind of also think of the 0 distributing through the bracket. But anyway, that whole thing is being put to the power of 0, so that equals 1. Now that's how the, um, the 0 index rule works. Now why does it work? Let's have a look at a bit of an explanation. I'm going to run through uh, the same question thought of in two different ways. If we have a to the power of 4 divided by a to the power of 4, um, there's two different ways of thinking about that, and I'll show you how that, that ex sort of explains the rule for us. In the first way of thinking about it, we can uh, kick in that rule that says when we're dividing terms with indices, we subtract the indices. So it's that bottom a to the 4 is dividing into the top a to the 4. So if we subtract the indices there, we've really got a to the power of 4 minus an indice of 4. So we will get there a to the power of 0 by thinking of it that way, using that subtracting indices rule. Now the second way of thinking about the, uh, the same question here is that uh, we have a to the 4 on the top being divided by itself and when a value is being divided by itself it goes in once. You know 10 divided by 10 would equal 1. Uh, 5 divided by 5 equals 1. So here a to the 4 divided by a to the 4 should go once as well. We could say a to the 4 goes into the top once and into the bottom once and 1 over 1 that equals 1. So we've, uh, we've taken the same question here, subtracted the indices and here divided the bottom into the top and it went once to show you that we get uh, different uh, I guess different expressions of the same answer. And so if we get uh, a to the power of 0 as our first answer, when we think of it using the subtracting indices, and we get a 1 as our second version, when we think about it as the bottom dividing into the top, 
Well, I'm here to sort of suggest to you that a to the 0 will equal 1. It's just a little illustration that if we think of the same question in two different ways, we get the, uh, the result that we're looking for there. Therefore, a to the 0 equals 1. If we get it for the first way of thinking, uh, a to the 0, and we get 1 for the second way of thinking, and they're all valid mathematically, then we've kind of shown them that rule makes a bit of sense in the end, even though at first glance it doesn't. Anyway, that's why the, uh, sub the uh, zero index rule is there. Anything to the power of zero equals one. Just watch out for those tricky ones where it's only one section of the term that's being put to the power of zero. Just keep your wits about you there and con keep, keep your concentration. So that's a little explanation of the zero index, uh, peterblakemass.com. We'll catch you next time for some more videos. All the best.